What's up, y'all? This is 93.5 KWDC, and I'm your girl, Carolita, and I'm in the building with an amazing radio host out of Sacramento and the Bay Area, because you do do some Correct. Bay Area stuff. Mia Moore, how are you? I'm good. That's good to hear. Carolita, so, yes. we in here, girl. <laughs> we, we linked up. A colored woman in radio. That's I what I'm talking about. I love this. Yes. yes. I, I love that. <laughs> and you know what? Shout out to you, because I ran into your profile on social media. That's oh, the power so of social shocked. media. It connects you with people that are dope. And I looked at your page, your content. And I was like, this girl is doing it. You have something very special. I'm and trying. you should be so proud. And don't give up. Continue. You have a great platform here. Thank College you. radio is the way to start. I love this. I know. I, man, this is where I wanted to start so long so long ago. And then COVID hit. And I finally got to be able to get in. But I've been looking up to you since, uh, what, five years? I thought you were on longer than that. It felt like longer. Yeah, you know what? I've been in radio since I was 18 years old. Dang, well, can I ask how old yeah. you are? It's all good, you know. We're aging gracefully. <laughs> I'm 39. Oh, what? Looking like I'm 28. Right. No, no for real. No, yeah. for real. Yeah, I'm 39. You know, radio keeps you young and hip. Yeah. Like yeah. I swear, there's people in radio when you would never think they're like in their 50s. You're like, what? Because of their, because how they have to act, basically, right? I think it's also. Um, you know, it's it's the environment that keeps you young, the music, mm-hmm. the lifestyle, you know. I mean, it could be a very hard lifestyle if you, like, you know, drink and do drugs and stuff like that, live that rock star life. Yeah, not but, me. Um, <laughs> no, like, I feel like radio keeps you youthful and young, like, hip and cool. Like, I still feel like I'm young just because of everything you do, you know? Yeah, I was thinking, like, the men personality, though, like... To men, like do the men look? Do they? I know they oh, act I know young. So I know many men guys don't that look act. so young. No, they look young. Yeah. I was thinking, do they look young in the face? That was my first thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. You know, like I actually um, a couple of weeks ago, I you know somebody new that had had started in the building that I was in, and I was like, oh, he's probably like in his thirties, and he's like, no, I'm like forty two, and Dang. I'm like, what? You got to do the Kevin Hart. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, I was so shocked. I was like, wow, this is great. Like, it's great to see that. But it has a lot to do with, of course, that person's lifestyle. Like, he doesn't drink. And mm. he, all he does is, like, radio and work. But I'm telling you, radio is fun. Radio yeah. keeps you happy. I hope and one it, day I get there. You will. You will. <laughs> I'm going to give you some pointers. I'm going to give you some advice. I can mentor you through um, through it all. I think Thank that you. women in radio need to stick together. And I saw when I saw your profile, I was like, oh, she's so dope. Like, oh, you got you. it. Thank you. Yeah. So one thing I will tell you, just continue to do this stuff like Mm -hmm. this. Continue to record everything you do. Have great interviews and and put it out. That's my problem, though. I hate recording. Like, picking up the phone and just like, okay, I'm done with this. It's (laughs) a lot of work, you know, but I think, um, you know, you got to put that work in. You got to pay your dues like we all did in in this Mm -hmm. industry. Like, everybody starts somewhere. Like, I started in college radio, you know, and got an internship and then you know worked my way up you know so but you gotta put in the work you gotta like you know we all gotta start somewhere and we all started from like the bottom and now right. we're here you know and the journey is, is is so beautiful it's it's hard it's you know you're gonna have to make sacrifices and big decisions it's it's a it's a really fulfilling job but man it, it's definitely hard just like anything though any job you're gonna you know have some trials and tribulations or you're gonna have you know like some bumps on the road but you just you you just gotta push through them you know how was the sorry how was the fine. beginning part of your career like the internships like what kind of sacrifices were you making back then so when i started i did you know uh i started at Ohlone College. Um, Ninety point three or eighty nine point three KOHL. Is that in Fremont? That's not Laney. No, no, that's Oakland. Laney's Oakland, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, Fremont and it's beautiful camp campus. Mm-hmm. Did the radio and TV broadcasting course, so they offered an internship. And back in the day, you know, they offered so many internships at radio stations, like public yeah. radio stations. And you know, when I was eighteen, I was like working at. I had like a little part time job, and. Um, I was like, what I what do I want to do, you know, like for my life? You know, mm-hmm. like 18, you gotta make a like right. a, life a decision. big decision. <laughs> like, what are you gonna do in your life? <laughs> right? You can't just be home or like I was working at a chiropractor's <laughs> office and 
I mean, it was cool. It's like a, I mean, that's better than my job at 18. I was working at McDonald's. <laughs> really? I feel like McDonald's pays better now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so I, um, yeah, I was doing that, and I literally, we would, me and the other girl that I worked with, um, we would always like turn on the radio and put it up to like our favorite radio station, mm-hmm. which was Wild 949. Mm-hmm. So I lived, in, I'm from San Jose. Mm-hmm. So we would always change it. And I just had this like moment where like, oh, that's what I need to be doing. It's so funny. Like I was like, that's it. Like I heard the DJ talk. I think it was like St. John or somebody. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So I literally like w- w- enrolled in Ohlone College, got that internship. And through that internship, I mean, we were like the slaves. You would yeah. have to set up all the events, mm-hmm. working crazy hours. My commute was from San Jose to San Francisco because that's what the radio station was. So those are the sac- sacrifices you're making at 18 the when traffic. you're broke. The traffic, you're paying Man. for gas. You know, I had to beat up cars. So I had to deal with that headache. Man. Working crazy hours just to be a part of the, the brand get my foot in and through getting my foot in you're meeting other people in radio you know that have the same story and started in the same way that you did and they're hungry to be on the air so back then a lot of people would start in promotions Mm -hmm. and then hustle their way into programming like turn in air checks because when you're doing the street team you are you know an intern and then if you become a driver you would get paid a driver? Yeah, so you would drive the vehicles. Oh, and then everybody be the team lead okay. for that day, for that event. Mm-hmm. And then you have two interns with you or three, depending on the event. You go set up, execute the event. But at that point, you're getting paid because you're literally like the lead, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're driving the vehicles. You have to make sure all the equipment's in, all the tents, the tables, the banners. you got to show up to that <laughs> event. you got to banner the whole thing, you know? But you're the driver. You're the lead, basically, and you're getting paid. At that mm-hmm. point, like back then, I think it was like whatever minimum was wage was like 725 or 750 but you're getting paid but then at that point you're able to do call-ins like hey we're checking in from you know california's great america we're gonna be out here till 10 o'clock make Mm -hmm. sure to come down we got the tent we got prizes we got tickets to this this that you blow it up so you're checking in from the streets so then that's when you make your way on the air so what was the craziest time in that time before we go on to the the next time what do you mean the craziest? what is the craziest thing you've seen on the street while out there you know, let me tell you a crazy story. Um, I was doing van hits. So part of you being on the street team, they would sign you up to basically take the vehicle of that radio station out mm-hmm. and go to neighborhoods and give out free shit. Like, Just any neighborhood. Oh, can I say that? <laughs> Oh, no, it's fine. I'll probably believe it. It's yeah. fine. So you give away, like, free... They, they would give you a bin of mm-hmm. free T-shirts. It would just have a bunch of prizes in there. DVDs, CDs, you know, all the promo CDs, stuff. CDs, you yeah. your age, girl. For real, I'm telling you. Yeah, right, you now it's probably like a promo code card. Right, it's a USB. <laughs> we're just going to scam this. Right. Yeah, it's all of, yeah. You got a CD now. Right, so, we, you know, that's what we did back then. So the craziest thing that happened to me was we were in the hood in mm. San Francisco. I think it was, like, the tenderloin or i forgot what. those ho- those not i was gonna say hotels so, those apartments yeah i don't i don't remember exactly but i took I remember, the wrong turn one time i was like we did yeah. we did we took the wrong turn <laughs> and they didn't appreciate it so this guy basically threw a rock and shattered the windshield of the oh radio station's vehicle at the time and that just landed all in my face my homie oh my hoser gosh. was with me who's still my friend to this day and he actually still works for that radio station so shout out to hoser and get a house radio um <laughs> And me and they were like, oh, my God. So we, like, dipped. And we went back to the radio station. And, of course, we had a file report and tell, you know, our bosses. That was, like, the scariest thing. And we were there, like, in peace. Right? But you <laughs> know like, what? They love the radio station. Yeah, like, they probably yeah. had people come down there asking them questions, though. Like, you know, like, um, news. And they're probably like, not another one. And they were rock. I, I don't know. know. It was, like, scary. Or maybe they just didn't appreciate us, you know, yeah. being in their territory. I would, I, I maybe they didn't like the radio a, station. It could man. be a lot of reasons. We don't know who the person was. We we just got out of there. At that point, you just need to go. In my head, they're like, one of us is KMU. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, we don't like yours. We like KMU. It was, the, you know, this was, like, this is a true story, you guys. This oh, was, you no. know, when I first started radio, you know, and, and that was, like, part of, that was the craziest street team story. Yeah. You know, intern days, and I was like, "Oh my god, I was so scared." But you know, we were okay. We didn't get mm-hmm. injured, but we could have. Right? What if you the know? rock actually hit you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Imagine or cut my face or the wind. You know, the no. glass. Like, but it did shatter all over. We got out. We were. So you got scared. out the car. I would have stayed in no, the car. We, like, driving. We did. Oh. We were like, 
<laughs> we, we dipped out of there. We were like, okay, we uh, really wait. Mean. So how did you get back with the windshield gone? We just drove it like that. No. My boy was like, we got to go. You know, it's like one of those things where you just react. You like, he, was he driving? Yeah, he was oh, driving. Because okay. I was an intern, so I wasn't, you know, a driver yet, so... <laughs> crazy <Heck no. laughs> it was some great times because you're you know the cool thing about it's it's, it's you know 20 years later you know you really think back and you're like the journey was so amazing mm -hmm. like starting off being an intern paying your dues you know bannering all these cool events we're talking about big concerts like comedy shows celebrities mm. like celebrities coming to the rate i mean back then you know radio's changed so much yeah you know like especially right now it's mm -hmm. so different the energy is not what it was 20 years ago you know and oh my god it was so much fun like how big everything was everything was a, a production an artist is coming in oh we had to decorate you know and make sure everything was perfect when, when the artist came into the studio like it, it was just so cool it was the coolest thing i've wanted to do you do they know? not do that anymore they don't like get not ready for as that? not it's it's different it's, it's not, not as important it's not that it's not important. It's always important when an artist came, comes in. You know, I just interviewed Ty Dolla Sign like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we had the cameras rolling, mm -hmm. you know. Um, everything is more like digital now. So they want to record digital besides audio, you know. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure that there's video and pictures of him in the studio. And, you know, so... It's still exciting, but it's not as exciting where they're not decor. You know, they're not getting balloons set up anymore and oh, decorating okay. and you know calling the media and saying oh you know or sending that story out to the TV stations or you know just putting it out there. Like it's it's uh, they're not doing an event just because he's coming in. Well, I know? think it's because artists are more accessible nowadays. Oh, they're so accessible. so. I think that's what has to do. Yeah, with it. I don't so think it's like they need like radio. radio. Of course, they still need radio, but mm -hmm. yeah, like he could just go live. An artist could go live and just have like a million people right. like watching him, and he could just be sharing his news instead of going to the radio station and, and breaking the news. Right. You know, it's like yeah, there's so many resources. So that's like the difference, you know, of how it is now versus how it was before. I wish it would break the news on the radio more often though. Because I yeah. do love me some, like, Breakfast Club and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, those platforms have built it to, to stay like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Those platforms, like, that's why you go there. It's like, what they're talking about. But they've hyped it up and created that lane for themselves, you know? Right. Um, if you're on that platform, New York Radio, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other animal we're talking about. Would the you ever whole... move to New York? Will I ever move to New York if the money's right? And um, the position's <laughs> right. What if it's so like at this age, first? you know, like I've moved for my career like five times. <gasps> so if you want to be in media and radio and TV, you got to be ready for that. I know. And those are some big sacrifices because some people, yeah, have kids, have I to have change kids. their lives. Yeah. And, you know, but some people are so hungry for it that they're willing to do it because they, you know, they want to take that next step because... One thing I will tell you, every every city that I moved to, it was I was evolving. You're moving yeah. on up. You're getting more experience, you know? And that's the beautiful part about, you know, making that big sacrifice. Does it get lonely? Yeah, it gets yeah. very lonely. I've you, had to move to these cities alone with no family, no, no friends, starting over. <laughs> Jeez. It's tough. It's not easy, but it's really rewarding because, you know, after a couple months, you start making friends, you get used to it, you get mm -hmm. settled and, you know, work is fun. So you're doing stuff, you know, pe with people that you work with, mm -hmm. you, be, you know, you make friends and it gets easier, but it's not easy to do in the beginning. When you first started off on radio, you went through the internship and all that. Where did you start on being on the air? Like, how did that start? So after I was an intern, I went to I I ended up getting fired. Oh, no. <laughs> so started my career at Wild Night for Nine in San Francisco, went to Kate on in Salinas for like maybe four months and ended up getting let go. Then I went to do promotions at a Spanish radio station. Mm -hmm. It was called 93.3 La Raza. And La Raza was a regional me Mexican station. Mm -hmm. And through a friend, um, shout out to Hoser, the guy that was driving oh, the yeah. vehicle. <laughs> he was like, hey, hit up, you know, Carlos, Carlos Pedraza. And he was working at a um, regional Mexican radio station that had just launched in mm -hmm. the Bay Area. 
And I hit him up and I was like, hey, you know, I want to get back in. I want to do promotions. So he got, you know, he gave me a job. Basically, he's like, yeah, we're looking for promotions. People like come on in. I was like, perfect. I didn't care if it was Spanish radio. I'm like, I speak Spanish. But, you know, I just wanted to be in radio. So got my foot back in the door there after like three years of doing promotions and being his assistant um, and working these amazing events. um, The program director was like, do you want to be on the air and like do weekends? And I was like, yeah. And then I had made friends with the production director and he had a weekend show. So I was like basically his co-host and I was like the worst. Like I didn't have no experience, but I knew I wanted to do it. I was like, Mm -hmm. I want to be on the air. Like that was always the goal, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had to find a way to get in somehow. And that was like the first time that I actually was on the radio. Were you like speaking Spanish? Speaking so? Spanish with the production director. Um, and he was like, he was the main host. I was just mm-hmm. chiming in and like saying a couple things. We did a demo air check. And he liked me. You know, he was like, you're cool, you know. And he, he knew I was young. I didn't have no experience. But it, right. it was just more fun for us mm-hmm. to do that. Because it was like a weekend show. It wasn't like nothing prime time. That was the first time I opened the mic and was on radio. Then I finally decided to leave that because I was like, I don't want to do promotions. And then I sent my demo out to when, do you remember like back in the day when reggaeton started? Mm -hmm. Daddy Yankee? Yeah, when Mm -hmm. Daddy Yankee and that whole era like started. Believe me, I was the only black girl like, (laughs) Right? <laughs> um, well, they, you know, started creating radio stations under that format, like reggaeton oh, really? or Spanglish. Yeah. Mm. I think the, the, I think it was like Herbin formats. Basically, it's like Spanglish radio mm-hmm. stations. And it was called La Calle in San Francisco. So I sent my air check to the OM because I had met him at a party and... I was like, what? I want to, um, I want to be on the air. Like, so I <laughs> did a air check, a mock air check. You know, I just went into a studio, recorded it, sent it to him. And he was like, oh yeah, you sound great. Cause that's what they were looking for at the time. You know, mm-hmm. somebody that spoke Spanish and English and could do it, could, could, could say that, like speak Spanish and English and be on the air. And that'd be good for the Bay area too. Yeah. yeah. And that was in the Bay area. That was in San mm-hmm. Francisco. It was like, I owned by Univision. So yeah, like he gave me weekends and then I did weekends for six months. And that was so much fun. Like I was just doing weekends. It was so fun going into the city. And then um, from there, I went to Cade on back to Salinas and actually moved there for a full time, you know, on air position. But when you're hungry for it, you know, you just got it. You know, and yeah. I think like with this. With radio, it's like not you have to have it. Like you have to have that talent. You have to have that it factor. Mm-hmm. You got to be hungry for it. It's not something anything. Nobody could teach you necessarily how to be on the radio. You you got to be witty on your own. You got to have that personality. <laughs> like you got to have something, you know, right. like to offer. Like, like I knew I wanted to do this or I wanted to be in entertainment since I was little. Like I, I knew I want, like I wanted to either be a singer or I, it just had to be something. And I finally figured out what it was at 18. How did you know it was a singer? You're like in the bathroom like, huh? I knew. That's not the key. Ah. No, I knew when, um, I knew because, like, my mom was a single mom. Mm-hmm. She wasn't, ta- you know, I was in jazz band. I used to play instruments in, mm. in you know, in middle in elementary school. I used to play the trombone. I was really into music at a young age. I just knew I, w- I had something special. But I knew that my mom couldn't afford to, like, continue to support me in those ways. Mm-hmm. So when I was 18, I just kind of said, well, I, want- I know I want to do something, like, in entertainment. I just didn't know what it was. Until that one day, like, literally working at that office, turning on the radio and listening to the DJ, I was like, that's what it is. So I finally figured it out later and it still involved music. And, you know, I still sing like in the shower and like, here, yeah. you know, what I mean? but it's like, you know, there's, it's, it's in you. So yeah. you gotta like, I think everybody that's in media, it says they're special people. Like it's not just somebody like, Oh, I just decided to be on the radio right. and just was amazing. Like, no, yeah. it's like, you have to have it. I feel like I had something kind of the similar, the same way I was into entertainment. I'm like, I'm going to be in entertainment one day. I don't know. I'm like, I'm not going to be singer. Can't sing good. Um, <laughs> but I did have like the, the click, but it was more like, sort of, I was listening to podcasts every day. Oh, okay. And I had that click and I was like, this is it. And then I'm like, okay, well, I want to do podcasting, but I also want to be on air on the radio. But like, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you can. Oh, and I think that that's, it's great that you started like the other way around. Like people do radio and then go to podcast or do, mm-hmm. you know, the same, you know, they do both. But podcasting, you know, became really popular like in the last 10 years. Yeah. But I also like think. But it's that, cool that you've done this because yeah. it's going to be a little bit easier because you already know mm-hmm. how to talk. You already know how to, you know, you, you basically got the whole experience. Right. 
when you, when you go to radio, you're just going to talk less. Yeah, that's what sucks. That's what sucks about radio because I love talking about like super, like, you know, BT awards or stuff like that, talking trash. I love It's great about to people. be a part of radio. It is. Mm-hmm. But you are going to talk less. But if you could create your platform without radio, that's going to be more valuable to you know, and your brand thinking. at the end of the day. If you create a YouTube channel and you start getting millions of subscribers, if you start networking and making friends with celebrities and, you know, getting those good interviews, you're going to not never need radio. I know. That's what I was thinking. You too. know, because and it's all about creating your brand and building your brand. Mm-hmm. So build your brand, you know, take advantage that you have this studio um, here and you have the resources, you could bring artists here. You could, you know, underground artists or any, you know, just it's all about who you're networking with, who you're talking to and putting that content out on YouTube, on your podcast channel, like, you know, make it public, put it out, keep pushing it, you know, ask those good questions and continue to network. That's going to be so valuable for your brand. And honestly, you're going to be like, oh, I don't need radio. Oh, dang. <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy now how, yeah. like, you know, people that have never done radio are making more money than people in radio. That's like, crazy. social media mm-hmm. is so big. You don't, like, it, and it's crazy to say, but it's the reality. I yeah. know people, there's so many influencers that are making so much money just a, a, them creating their original content. Right. You know, there's yeah. people on OnlyFans making money. Man. <laughs> you know, it's like, man. there's a lot of ways to make money now. Um, it's great to be in radio because you, you get the whole benefit package. Mm-hmm. You're full time. You're on the air every day. You're hosting their events. You're, you know, but it's always good to have your own stuff um, brand. Like, you, you know, it's great to work for somebody, mm-hmm. but it's always good for you to have your own because they can't take that away. Are we, are you, not we, but are you creating a brand or have you created a brand and are we going to see anything in the future about from your brand? Yeah, you know, I feel like, so I've been doing radio since I was 18. I'm 39, right? Mm-hmm. So it's been a long time and I think when you're in radio, you have tunnel vision and that's all you focus and, and on doing and I did a couple, I did a different show, like a podcast show. It was called Shiro's. I was in there. It was like a women empowerment show that really inspired me at the time because they wanted me to create through the radio station to create something else. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know, let me do this. But I was doing mornings for so long. Right. And again, it's like tunnel vision. That's all you do is just radio. Now that, you know, I exited um, KSFM. I'm like really like I build my brand. People know who I am. I, I, I have a great reputation in the industry. I've made some great relationships. So people know who I am. I do voiceovers. You know, I do. I obviously I did on air um, or I do on air. But now I'm like, OK, I'm in the space where I'm like, what else do I want? from my brand like what does Mia Moore want to continue to do like what is Mm -hmm. this brand what's the next chapter you know and for sure it's taking some time off because when you're in radio it takes so much energy Mm -hmm. from you Mm -hmm. so much time and dedication that's all you do there's so much that is expected from you and it's stressful you know Mm -hmm. because you have to deliver ratings good show good content every day you have to be energetic and i've been waking up at 4 30 like this last seven (laughs) years eight years and it's been like tough on my body and i think right now as i'm older like my mental health is some so much more important and my well-being so right now i'm gonna take like nine weeks off Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's been two and through this time i'm actually thinking like yeah what's next but i do know for sure i'm gonna um, open up my own business so I'm going to create a business and um, not nothing involving like radio just something different because I'm kind of itching to do something different because mm-hmm. I've been doing this for so long I'm like okay I kind of want to try this or I want to try that so podcasting has been a conversation I'm like should I you know what kind of podcast do I want what do I want it to be about you know where am I going to do it like it's just you have to be strategic on your next move so Mm -hmm. right now that's where i'm at i'm in the space of like okay what what do i want to do what if i do want to do a podcast who am i going to do it with right you know what i want to talk about and i love podcasting and i think now i love it more and i love the idea of doing it because it's an extended version of who i am because Again, like I was telling you, in radio, you don't talk for so much. So I could talk for a minute and talk about what's trending, but... 
you don't get to get, get your opinion out there or there's so much more you want to say, but mm-hmm. you're limited, you right. know? So like now I'm like, oh yeah, I want to talk. I want to talk mm-hmm. freely like we're doing right now. Like right. this is fun to me. Right. You know, so for sure taking some time off, going to open up my business. And what kind of business is it? If I, if you don't so mind I'm asking. Yeah, I want to open. Oh, well, so let me give you the backstory. My mom's a florist. My mom's mm-hmm. been a florist since before I was born. Um, so, so you get those bomb flowers. Yeah, my mom is a, a florist. She's a businesswoman. My sister as well. So this is like the family business. It's mm-hmm. my mom has a flower shop. My sister has a flower shop, and she's been doing weddings, funerals, quinceañeras, the flowers for all these events for many years. And they're based in San Jose. So I'm not really good at you know doing all the arrangements and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's my mom, my <laughs> sister's talent. You know. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good at that. But what I want to do is actually, um, cause my mom's been pushing me too. You know, she's like, you gotta have something else. Like open up a little business so you can keep yourself busy. You know, mm-hmm. mind you, I'm not married. I don't have kids. So I have time. So I was like, so tired, you know, from doing the morning show. Like I never really, like I knew I needed to do something, but I'm like, I'm so tired. And I didn't have the energy to do it. It's so crazy that now that I think about it, you know, cause I have time to breathe. <laughs> and it's basically, um, the business is, it's a war, a war, uh, flower walls business so basically it's like a backdrop of of flowers but they're artificial flowers Mm -hmm. and i actually like it's so crazy i had been praying um for inspiration because i'm like i don't want to do a a flower shop like my mom right like i'll take over that business when my mom's ready to retire Mm -hmm. you know but i want to do something in related to that right because my mom's like i could you know teach you how to do this and i'm like Oh, I think I found the inspiration. So let's get back into radio. You're a brand ambassador, which is honestly super cool. Um, the br- And I want to get back to like how you met these people. So you have all these networks. How do you network in this? How was your way of networking in this? Um? So because I'm, I, you know, I'm so friendly and have like a lot of personality, mm-hmm. it's really easy for me to just go up to somebody and be like, hey, nice to meet you, Amia, you know, from so-and-so, whoever, whatever I'm working at at that time. And, you know, just greeting people and being nice, like sending a message like, hey, um, just kind of like I did to you. You know right. what I mean? Like, hey, I love your content. Like, mm-hmm. stay in touch. Like, you know, like it's just little things like that go a long way. And you'll be surprised of how many people will want to talk to you and network with you. And, you know, to just be your friend. Like, people are really cool out there and are willing to, like, support you. So for me, like, making friends with people just, again, just by introducing myself and then being like, hey, I love what you do. Like, how did you do you mind me asking how you got started? Or do you have any tips? Or here's my demo. Like, hey, if you have a sec, like, can you let me know how I sound? Like, I love your radio station, you know, fi- finding out who the program directors are of the radio stations that I wanted to work at, or, you know, finding who the boss is, you know, in charge over here, or whatever it is that you want to get into. It's just like literally just reaching out and introducing yourself. That's how you network hey i'm so and so i'm an intern or i'm doing this um if you ever need help with anything let me know this is like what what the type of work i do if you ever need video editing let me know and you'll be surprised of how many people are going to want to you know like talk to you or just be like oh yeah hey i might need that in the future like what's your contact info or stay in touch and just staying in touch with people like that you meet once after you make that introduction staying in touch like hey hope you're doing well like hey this is another project that i worked on let me know if you like it or you know if you ever want me to do something like that for your brand or oh, you know wow. i never even thought of it's like stuff like, like that. that like that's what I was telling you, like for you, like you, you have this room, you have this platform. So reach out to every radio DJ, every mm-hmm. radio DJ out there wants to tell their story, right. you know, and that's, that's, that's just, Hey, I'm Carlita from, you know, Stockton, California, Stockton, California. <laughs> this is the radio station that I do. I do these interviews. I would love mm-hmm. to have you on, you know, it's for, it's for my homework or it's one of a project for school. And you'd be surprised of how many people are going to want to support you and help you. Cause it's, you know, it's, for your resume, it's for college. Like it's right. gonna get you setting you up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how you network, and that's how I've been able to do it. You know, and I think not building, um, not burning your bridges is very important. You know, if one situation ends, exit gracefully. Never have a bad attitude. Never bow, bad mouth people. If you hear gossip, I don't want to entertain it. Right. You know, it's like really being aware of all that. But people are always going to remember you when you're nice and when you help them, at least the good ones, you know, and you'd be surprised of like how many people 
just because I'm I am who I am and I just been cool or helped out so he, a person with this or showed them support and love like you're you're a star like I have so many friends that have told me lately it's so funny like you know you're gonna be okay Mia you know you always supported me you always believed in me and like I just want to let you know that I'm always gonna be here for you too like you're gonna be okay like just because I was just genuine and, and a good person, mm-hmm. like people remember that. So that's why I always tell people like network, like be, it's okay. Like to be, you know, introduce yourself to people. Don't be scared of the big bosses. Like one thing about me, I've never been scared of, I don't care what position you hold. You could be the owner of this building and I'd be like the same person. Hi, nice to meet you. Like right. I'm so-and-so and you know, um, l- love your building or what you know, compliment. <laughs> and you know, like never be afraid to introduce yourself or talk mm-hmm. to, even if they're rude. Cause some people are going to be rude. Not everyone's going to be rude receptive to your energy right but a lot of people will be okay so know that some people won't but a lot of people will you know and a lot of people won't sometimes but some people like there's always going to be someone out there that is going to show you that love right back and you never know what people are going to need in the future that's why you don't burn your bridges you know that's why you always just keep it cool like do your best and um be a person of of, of your word be a woman of your word of your you know of Whatever you're going to bring to the table, make sure you execute that and always stick to that. You know, never be a flake. Always show up on time. Like, you know, all those little things like right. really um, will say a lot about you. And people are going to want to work with you. When you network, do you uh, usually do it online or is it more because this is a college radio like people really want to network right here. So is it reaching out online or is it like making going places and making sure that you talk it's to a little bit of everything person? you know depending on what your goal is right mm-hmm. like reaching out just to even a simple dm to introduce yourself i mean people don't answer you know that's why i was so yeah. shocked that you dm me yeah, i'm like you, <gasps> um yeah and some people won't you know what i mean but don't stop trying mm-hmm That'd be a great interview question. You know, you'd be like, I reached out to you a hell of a time on, on Instagram and you never hit me back. They'll be like, well, you did? And you'd be like, yep, I got it right here. And they're going to be like, oh my God. Like, those are, you know, never stop reaching out via Instagram. If you know that, let's say, um, someone that you want to network with is going to be at this event, pull up and just introduce yourself. Oh, okay. You know, um, you got to like hustle, you know, or find somebody that knows them mm-hmm. and be like, Find out who the assistant is, do your research or, you know, who's managing them or, you know, like it's it. sometimes to get to the main person that you want to talk to or work with or whatever. It's going to take you sometimes going to take you a little long. You're going to go this way. You're going to talk to somebody else. Or, right. You know, but. Yeah, it's either showing up to events, sending an email, a message, meeting them in person and just inter- making that introduction and things, you know, Sometimes it will not be as fast. Like they might not respond and then you just got to keep trying, but don't give up. You know, oh, yeah. that's what I've been doing lately. Yeah. It's been crazy. I'm going to sit in there. There's so many ways to how yeah, you connect LinkedIn. with people, people like LinkedIn, their social media, you know, if you know, they're going to be at an event, like let's say, let's, let's say you want to network somebody in radio and they're going to be at California's great America. Go mm-hmm. talk to the, whoever's at the tent and be like, Hey, nice to meet you. What's your name? Are you on Instagram? Let me follow you. Like, Hey, who's your boss? Who's in charge over there? Do you mind like giving me their information? I kind of want to just send my resume and th- that person could be like, Oh yeah. Or send it yeah. to me. Can I send it to you? Maybe you could forward it to some, you know, mm-hmm. it's like doing that type of I stuff. I did that a couple of times. Yeah. I and popped you, up on people. Yeah. I'm like, they're okay. going to get tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay you gotta hustle you know to make it in this industry you gotta you gotta just and talk to everybody but i think with you like i think it'll be great like in- interview all these people you interview the program directors be like right. hey like would you mind coming into college radio and doing a podcast with me about your job and mm-hmm. how you find talent like everyone's you never know they're gonna be like hey I'm, i might have a little time for this yeah that's right. that's cool like yeah you know and especially because you have college like People want to support community colleges mm-hmm. or college in general. You know, that's the future. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you be your advice for people that want to get into radio? Well, right now, definitely network, but also create your brand first. So c- work on, you know, creating your content, your original content coming in. Like, just do it now. Like, you have so many platforms. You have YouTube. Create that YouTube channel, you know, Um talk about topics on that channel Mm -hmm. you know really start building your brand like who is going to be carolita you know i'm going to be known for doing dope interviews with hip-hop artists or you know like whatever that avenue like 
just interview every underground artist. Like get you right. gotta get started somewhere, right? But um, focus on your brand. Make sure you know like what your brand is, what you want your brand to be, and what it's going to be about. Are you going to be a community person? Are you going to be all about music? Are you going to be about politics? You know, find out what your niche is. Mm -hmm. And with time, you'll find that out. The more you do this, you'll be like more inspired by people's stories and stuff. But definitely work on your brand, build your social media, um, build your reels and do all that, you know, stuff. If you could go viral and find a way to do, you know, like right. be like master that mm -hmm. and continue to uh, create original content and air checks and record yourself doing commercials, how you would sound, record yourself on how you would sound being on the radio and send those demos out. Find out who the program directors are at this radio station, that company, that company, wherever you want to be at, whatever radio station you want to be a part of, find out who, you know, who HR is, find out um, who the program directors are, who the GM is, and make that introduction. Go network, go introduce yourself, send your stuff, and put yourself out there. Because that's what these companies want. They want somebody that's not hiding behind a mic. It's not right. like that anymore. It's not just mm -hmm. being about being about, you know, it's not about just being on the air and being in the studio. No, they want cameras rolling. They want you to check in like, hey, we got this, you know, this is not happening on the radio. We got tickets. You got to be on the gram checking in, you know. So it's like build that, build your brand so it's valuable to them. That's what's hard for me. I'm I'm gonna get to it, but I'm. Woo. What's hard for you? What 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 what? Why do you say it's hard? Because <sighs> I I hate I hate social media. As much as people think that I like it, I'm just like no. I'm forcing what don't you like about it? it? Um. I don't really like being in front of the camera, <laughs> but I know it's something that I need to do to yeah. be on the radio. So I do it, but it's not cameras. And me don't get along. So yeah. I don't really, but you like doing interviews. You yeah. like talking to people. You mm -hmm. like, you know, hearing the stories, right? I like listening. And what's going to make you more comfortable with the camera? Ah, you doing um, it more okay yeah you really being okay because you know i was like shy you know when when it all became about video like i was very shy you know mm -hmm. i was like oh my god i feel fat i look fat like in right. the camera and you know i was like shying away i just wanted to be on the radio because that's mm -hmm. what i was used to but you got to change with the times right? right so i had to just get more comfortable and mm -hmm. do what works for you so if you got to angle the camera in a certain way, do it. Right. But also know that you're beautiful and know that like when you look at yourself in the mirror and, and, and on the camera, like know that you're worth something, like know that you're bringing a lot to the table, mm -hmm. know that you're talented, you know, like you're getting the job done and you're showing up and that takes a lot of courage, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's a lot of energy right there, yeah. but know that you matter and that you're great. So if the camera makes you shy, film yourself and commit to convince yourself, like, you know what, this isn't that bad, you know, because it's literally our insecurities that stop us, stop us from, Oh my God, being being better and being reaching, you know, different um, levels in our life. Like I swear, it's always us, especially right. as women where we're so hard on ourselves, but you're so talented and you, you have a great mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm own that like keep telling yourself every morning like okay i know i'm a little camera shy but i'm gonna get through this i'm gonna get more comfortable and keep recording yourself keep getting more comfortable angle to make yourself look good which is where you're comfortable and even if they get a bad angle that doesn't mean that you're not you suck or you're not worthy or you're ugly it doesn't mean any of that that's just in your head or whatever that voice is in your head like don't believe it that's <laughs> what, like that meme yeah the meme going around that be like if you're shy and you're don't let your shyness or your um, insecurities kill your dream. Yeah. And you know, yeah. like we're, I think a lot of us women and I've heard a lot of stories about like, cause I talked to, you know, a lot of women and I'm like, like we all could relate to that. Mm -hmm. We've let our insecurities sometimes, you know, I mean, not apply blast. for that job or not go for that because oh, yeah, oh, that's me. like, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't feel confident enough because of my looks. Nah, fuck that. Like, look at Lizzo. I right. love women like Lizzo. I love plus size women. I support the movement. They inspire me so much because mm -hmm. they're so comfortable in their skin and they're killing it because they got over that. Oh, OK, this role. Yeah. And I've literally become more of that person. You know, it takes time. But like if you can work on it now, <laughs> like, <laughs> because I, you know, I just got weight loss surgery um, 
and I got it for different reasons. It wasn't because I wasn't confident. It wasn't because like I didn't feel like I could do my job or it was more because of health like reasons. I was like, I'm having a really hard time losing weight. Like I work out, like I've gained so much weight just because of my my lifestyle and waking up so early. Like so this was actually beneficial to me. But like now I'm just and you know it's funny cuz like as you get older you're just kind of like thinking like guys guys don't even care. Right. Right. Guys. Right. You like guys. They be like, put the poop bomb on my forehead. <laughs> Literally. And it's like, when you get over that, when you get over there, you're like, it's true. Like, Man. I've never had an issue getting a boyfriend or having a boyfriend or going on a date. Like, right. it's literally us women. Like, we're, we're so hard on ourselves and we need to get over that. So I encourage you to, you know, just um, continue to pour into yourself and give yourself self love and, literally tell yourself every morning like i am beautiful i am worthy and okay if i have like a role or whatever like that doesn't mean i'm not talented like right. claim you, who you are like you're still talented you you're still very smart you know you could do the job you're showing up like you're motivated like you're beautiful i am worthy like, repeat those things to yourself every day and i think it'll help um but just know that it doesn't matter like if you're big, skinny, medium, like your talent is what they're looking for. Right. You know, what can you offer? So just I feel like mind. some do look for certain yeah, body some. types. I think like TV is still, you know, yeah. a little late, but I think it's changing. You see so many different types of women shapes. Mm -hmm. So I love that about TV that you're seeing the change more and more because women are just owning it. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah like, I am who I am, but I, I can still do the job. I'm still talented, right. I'm still witty. I'm still funny. You know, like people love me. Yeah. I think a, a reason why a lot of people feel that way also is because of, um, they blast these body types. Like just my, when Kim Kardashian came out with her, but that she didn't buy, but right. <laughs> like, I feel like they blast those type of body types, but that's just my opinion. And now Lizzo's blasting her body. Right. Type. And now everybody's so mad. Changing. I'm like, yeah. And then people are uh. going to be mad. Okay. <laughs> like, but she's still successful. She still got signed. She's still right. a millionaire. People still love her. Like not everyone is going to like you in life, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to love you in right. life too. So there's always going to be the pros and cons. There's always going to be someone that, you know, doesn't like your voice or doesn't like what right. you bring to. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. That doesn't mean that you have to stop what you're doing. Like I've, I've had so many people tell me like that they don't like me or they didn't mm -hmm. like what I said or how I said it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry. Like you get a lot of that in radio, huh? Yeah. Cause people have, you know, you're, you're reaching millions of people on the radio. Mm -hmm. So it's like, people are going to have their opinions, but that should not stop. You know, if you're a good person and you're a person of integrity and you're, you know, like not hurting anyone, bashing anyone, being negative, like to cause that backlash, then keep pushing. Like, yeah no f's given like keep going because you can't let their energy win who influences you in radio angie martinez was definitely Ooh. one of my biggest influencers like have you she, read her book i did um i did and i got to meet mm -hmm. her when i did radio in las vegas which was so awesome she was so nice she seemed and i was so like nice. i never thought i would meet you and she was like why and i was like <laughs> Because you're in New York and I'm in the West Coast, but she was emceeing an event for, um, for who was it? Um, I forget the boxer's name, and it's not Floyd Mayweather. It was the other one, the one that got his, the one that bit the ear. What's the name? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. So he had like a, a nonprofit event, and we got invited to it. And she was emceeing it, and it was so cool. so cool. I just went up to her and I was like, Oh my god! You know, I introduced myself, like you know, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't care. So I'm like, I'm going to introduce myself. This is probably the only time I'll meet her. So I was like, hey, my name is Mia. I work for the local radio station. And she was like, oh, dope. And I was like, I just, you know, I love you. You're so awesome. And she was like, oh, thank you. You know, she was so nice. And we took a picture and I have it framed in my house. And, you know, I was like, she was just so dope. So her, Sana G, was definitely one mm. of my peoples that I loved listening to, you know, like when I first started. How long has she been on the radio? Because I swear that's the only person I ever hear when I go to the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, she's been on the radio for a long time, like definitely like over 20 years, over 25 mm -hmm. years. Um, and she, you know, she's from Fresno. She started in Sa oh, Really? And I think she did radio in Texas. Oh, and then wow. she went to the Bay. 
But um, Sana Jeej, I think she's always been like solid mm -hmm. Bay Area female radio jock. Mm -hmm. And I love Fresca. She's actually, Sana's like a friend of mine. Like when I got released from KSFM two weeks ago, she, you know, she, she sent me a message and we hung out and she's hella cool. Uh, very strong, very talented. Um, you know, so it was, it'd be Angie, it'd be Sana G, it'd be Fresca. She's also a, a female. Fresca's from where? Bay Area. Bay Area. Yeah, she used to work at Wild. Now she works at KBLX. Yeah. And she's old school radio. Mm -hmm. You got Sterling James. She doesn't do radio anymore, but she was also a pretty amazing jock. She did radio for like a good 20 plus years, I think, in the Bay Area. Renell is another one that I love. She, um, a lot of these Bay Area women, you know, because I grew up in the Bay Area, that's who I was listening to, like, growing mm -hmm. up. So they inspired me so much. So I'm like, oh, wow, like, they sound good. Look at them, right. strong voices in radio. And it's sad because there's not a lot of strong voices yeah. in radio anymore. Everyone sounds like a little girl. Really? I feel like it. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's changed. Like what, little, little girl. Little girl voices. Like, they just mm. sound so young. When you think old school radio, it's like, strong voices right like the angie voices you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's like i feel like it's changed i was just having this conversation with a friend um about the voices and radio not to bash on anyone but it mm -hmm. just the, the sound is just changed just like mm -hmm. the sound of hip-hop's changed you right. know like it's it's just different the but tone. listening to a little girl voice oh that would annoy me to be honest it's just sound they sound like <laughs> just young yeah oh, like this generation young. you know like mm -hmm. just very they just sound young um and I've always loved Liz Hernandez, too. She, amazing time in radio. She's back in radio. I know she took, like, 10 years off. Um, but she was, like, with Big Boy. Mm. You remember her, Liz Hernandez. They That was um, Big Boy's co-host for a long time. Um, those are, like, my top, like, female ones um, that I love. I mean, there's so many women in radio that are dope um, that I... Roxy's another good one. Like for, if you're thinking about Roxy. like LA, yeah, she used to be on the radio. Now she's like an influencer. She has a podcast. Mm -hmm. Isn't she doing? She went back to school, didn't she? Did you get I a don't know. Journalism degree. I feel like she's just on um the bre the Breakfast Club. No, so Roxy, there's two Roxies. That oh, okay. Roxy is she did television. This oh, yeah. Roxy, the one I'm talking about, she did radio in LA, and mm -hmm. uh, she's Latina. She's Salvadorian. Um, I always loved her work ethic. <clears throat> she's dope. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm trying to think of what. So I'm talking more about like West Coast women <laughs> that mm -hmm. like inspired me in radio. Except for Angie Martinez. Yeah, except for Angie. Um, Dee Dee in the morning. She's also dope. She's in Texas or Atlanta. I think how do Atlanta you see? How do you? Are you doing research on? So like in radio, like it, you're in the biz, right? So you learn about like different people through mm -hmm. other people and you know yeah you have to do your research like who's doing radio over here i'm just curious or you right. see them trending you know in the allaccess.com or radio mm -hmm. like you know when you're in radio you just learn about all these like women in radio and you know you'll see your you'll hear or you'll see their interviews especially with social media like that's how i found out about dd and i'm like who's this dd lady like she's dope mm -hmm. and i listened to her, i tuned in i did listen to her morning show and i was like she is dope and she's syndicated so it's like you know she's been doing radio for a while um i forgot whose co-host she was but yeah you just find out about these women yeah through research through tuning in Sometimes program directors would be like, oh, you should listen to so-and-so. She's cool. She might be an inspiration to you. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like stuff like conversations like that. Um, you find out about people. But yeah, also like your research too. What does your day in the life look like as a morning show host? Wake up at 4.30, drink coffee, get ready, feed the dog, walk the dog, leave by <laughs> 5, 15, be at the radio station before 6, um, get energized, the show prep is done the day before, but you come mm -hmm. in a little early to kind of like see what's new, what's fresh. You have your segments already like um, set for your show. So you just got to make sure <clears throat> you fill in, you know, what your segment is like that content. Um, you do the show, you, you know, obviously there for four hours in the studio, whether it's an interview, um, a community interview or you're giving away stuff. You just, you know, 
when you're in the studio, you prep for all that. Like, okay, I got the giveaway at seven. Okay, cool. What am I going to talk about in this hour? You got to prep for that. Like, you got to kind of have like a little layout, you know, that's a part of your show prep. Then we'd get off the air. Um, if I had a meeting, it'd be like right after my show, an air check meeting, probably like 30 minutes after your show's done. And then, you know, talk to the, the program director on what he didn't like or he's going to critique you. That was good. That was not so good. So it was like an after, like not basically every like day. sports. Oh, okay. Because like at sports, after you play a game, you guys have a meeting and what happened and what went wrong and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, not every day. Um, but let's say it was that day, like Thursdays is our meeting day. Then I know like that's an air check day. But normally, you know, like get off the air, go back to the desk, start prepping for the next day. And then um, there's a staff meeting or whatever it is that you have to do that day. There's might be another interview coming in, like, you know, an artist is coming in. So you got to do an interview at one o'clock. So you just hang around, get some lunch, you know, talk to the program director, shoot the shit with everybody at work, get ready for your next interview. The, the artist comes, you know, you're saying hi to the label people, do the interview, got to edit that, make time for that, whether it's the next day or that same day. And then you head out. And then, you know, for me, I'll go to the gym, um, meal prep, show prep. It's like you're always show prepping when you're doing radio because you're always thinking of like, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, Mm -hmm. topics or what's trending, you know, like breaking news, local stuff. Right. You know, um, part of my job at KSFM was to be involved in the community. So I always had to find out like what was good in SAC. And then when the city is like popping, like the Sacramento Kings, you know, we're winning. Like that's mm-hmm. so much hype that you're, you have so much content to talk about. So that always helps the show, you know. Um, so you're always like show prepping some way or another. Um, you know, that's like a, an, an, an average day. But every day is different at radio. Yeah. So you could be in the studio doing your show and your boss comes in and be like, oh, hey, um, so and so is coming in. Get ready for that interview. He's coming in like at noon. And you'd be like, oh, OK. So you got to quickly. after the show. Yeah, after the show. And do all your research. Or sometimes, yeah, they'll walk in with an artist and be like, hey, so and so came to visit us. You want to do an interview real quick? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, come on <laughs> in. You got to do it. And you didn't prep for it, but you're a professional at this point. Right. So you just got to come up with a question. Like, what are you, what are you pushing? What are you guys talking about? Like, do you have a new single? Like, you know, you just ask those mm-hmm. questions. It's, it's being normal too with this, with the artists. Cause like they're normal people too. You right. know? So even if you're not prepared, you should be like, bro, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know you were coming yeah. in. Come on in. Like what are we talking about? Like what, what's going on with you? Like, you know, it's, it's kind of like just setting that energy and vibe. Um, but yeah, like every day is different in radio. There's always something different, you know, whether there's a concert that you're hosting or emceeing or an interview commercials, you know, like if you get an order, like, Hey, there's this endorsement that came in, you, you'll get an email and you got to record that commercial. You got to edit it, send it back. So there's different things you're doing. Every day is different in radio, but in a normal day on a good day, you're coming in early, doing your show, meeting with the boss, shooting the shit. Show prepping for the next day and going home. That's a long day. How many hours? I was going to say that's a long day, but I didn't even ask you how many hours. It's not a regular eight hour day. You know, is it? There, were, there were days that I would wake up at 4 30 and get home at three. Three in the morning? No, three in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Wake up <laughs> that's at four, not too bad. Wake up that's at 4 30. 11 hours. Wake up, yeah, but it feels like a long day because yeah. you're being creative. You're giving uh-huh. out energy. Right. So that's a lot of thinking. It's a mm-hmm. lot of. It's, you know, our jobs as broadcasters is real mental. It's not physical. Right. You know, you just got to make sure you look decent and good. You know what I mean? And, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's mental. So, like, once that three o'clock would hit, I'd be like, I just want to go home, pass out. Go to sleep. Don't ask me anything right now. I can't watch my reality TV shows. (laughs) Oh, and then, you know, I forgot. Like, I had to record the San Francisco show. Oh, yeah. So, after I got off the air at 10 a.m., I would walk down the hall to another studio and start recording my San Francisco show because that was from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Dang. So it was like back to back and I'd be in there for another two hours. So, you know, that's like a long day already. And then if I had a meeting or another, it just keeps going. But, you know, that's that's the grind. Yeah. So the earliest was three o'clock. <laughs> You're like, we have to work hard, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's part of that, you know, and some some talent and jocks, they have three stations. Three stations. That they have to record, so it's that's it's exhausting. A long day what is that? All people. three program all directors three. have a longer job, like yeah. a longer day. I have friends that are program directors. They don't stop working. They go home and go work. Are they like listening to? They're listening to the radio station. Mm-hmm. They're responding to emails. It's scheduling music, music mm. research. You know, like 
if it's a new station, you got to write new imaging. You got to make sure the production's on point. You got to make sure the commercials are on point. You got to make sure your jocks are on point. Dang. Like that, uh, being a program director is a harder job. But all my friends that are program directors are on air too. Well, some oh. of them are on there too. So they're doing all that. Plus, they got to record oh, some shows. Because no. now, like, a lot of companies, like, you'll have, like, a management role, but you're mm-hmm. you're on the air as well. Some of them, you know, not everyone, but a lot of them. I noticed that. I feel or like... Or you have your own show, but you have, like me, how to record San Francisco. But some jocks have two more stations or three mm-hmm. that they have to record for. So imagine mm-hmm. that's a long day. Do you get paid more when you have multiple stations? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. That's a lot of that's a lot of work in one day. It's a lot of work. But what do you do to re to unwind? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Turn off the radio. <laughs> Meditate. Go get Meditate. a massage. Spa days. Ooh. Relax. And mm. relaxations. Uh, vacation. Beach days. Mm-hmm. You know, go by the pool. Like, I think as I okay. So doing radio in your twenties. Oh, you're you're like. You could go, you could do everything I just talked about and go out mm-hmm. and go party and drink and do, you know, you're living your best life in your 20s. When you're in your 30s, okay, you wind down a little bit. Now I'm like going to enter 40. <laughs> so now I'm like, R&R is amazing. You can listen to the rest of this interview on Wake Up With Carolita Tuesday at 11 a.m. If you can't tune in, be sure to check out the episode on kwdc.fm under the on-air tab.